Okay. I, um... I don't know. I've been talking to some friends about this. I'm sure a lot of people have been seeing it on the internet, specifically, ever since the Hogwarts Legacy game came out. And even before it came out, it was a huge thing. And uh, a big YouTuber that I have that I continue to watch, and I still think is really good, uh, the Jimquisition, just put up a... What the fuck? Just put up a video talking about it. Um... I haven't watched it yet. I'm curious to go through it. So, and for those who don't know, the Jimquisition very much pro LGBTQ. Um, and they, I'm assuming, are going, the way that it's like the legacy of hate, the name of the title, I'm assuming the route they're going to go down is um, like criticism of the game and not necessarily the game itself, but also like the creator, of course, J.K. Rowling. So for those who don't know, J.K. Rowling in the past has said some not so good thing about trans people. Um, I think the big specific thing that I know for sure that I've heard and that I understand is that she's pretty much a TERF, TERF being a trans uh, radical feminist, those being trans exclusionary radical feminists. Sorry, I forgot the E part. Um, and pretty much what this means is that she is like, she wants rights for women and she excludes trans women saying that trans women don't deserve or don't have or shouldn't be like part of the feminist movement because of it could be a multitude of reasons. I don't know exactly what her reasonings are. I think she, I don't know a hundred percent if she even believes in trans people. Um, she might believe in them, but think that they have a different group that they do not belong to in the feminist group. So they would show, she would probably say that trans women are not women. And she would say like, Hey, this is for, this is a, feminism is a thing for women. It's a movement for women. You are not a woman. So therefore we're going to exclude you. When we talk about women's rights, when we talk about women's problems, we're not talking about you. That's my understanding of where she like fits into that book. Um, and of course, if you are looking at some of these people and understanding that like, Hey, your rhetoric can lead to definitely harm. I know for sure, like, um, I'm almost certain she said things along the lines of like attacking someone for uh, trans women wanting to use like the the um, the gender they most recognize with uh, for bathrooms and stuff. I definitely know she had an opinion on that. So, and some of this stuff is just crazy, but I'm just curious from a more. I'm not sure in this video if if uh, the Jim Quizin is going to go directly down the route of talking about her views of trans people or go down the route of consumerism when you have these people at the head of certain IPs or certain kind of um, things that are sold to us and purchasing those things. I think that is, from from what they make on the internet, I feel like that's the route they're going to go down. I'm not too sure. That's, in my opinion, um, a fairly interesting question um, only because in our current day and age, I think it's impossible to truly practice um, consumerism, uh, ethical consumerism. I think I think it's almost impossible, or it's very, very, very hard for the average consumer. I think you have to be exceptionally wealthy, or um, have a lot of time in your hands, or be able to have a level of sacrifice that I don't think the average person is willing to commit to to actually practice true ethical consumerism. At some point, you are going to be contributing you're going to be interacting or using things that were brought to you in unjust or bad like a bad system like some someone had to suffer to bring the things that you now have and things that we should be like not be okay with and not only that you're almost likely going to be taking something or giving money slash um influence to someone who has views that differ than you so it's a very hard thing to practice. Um, I guess I just lay out my ideas about that to begin with. I have no problem with people practicing, picking and choosing the things that they want to ethically consume. So if there is something that you truly feel is a problem um, and you find it possible to make that voice and make that problem heard through boycotting or through um, not consuming something that you think is bad, 
No problem with that. You have every right to do that. And I don't think, because I think it's very difficult to actually be truly, truly ethical consumer, I don't see it as hypocritical to pick and choose those things. So just because someone chooses to boycott Hogwarts Legacy doesn't mean that they're a bad person for having an iPhone because maybe an iPhone was created with like sweatshop labor of some sort or like Nikes or something like that. I don't, I don't know enough about that stuff. You know, just like the common things that people say. I don't think that is hypocritical. Because being able to choose the things that you're willing to ethically consume, whether or not you ethically consume everything, the fact that you are choosing to ethically consume some things is a good. It's like this whole thing of like, no one's going to be the morally perfect person, but it's still good. It's still good for those people to choose to do, quote unquote, the morally good thing that we see in their eyes. So picking and choosing, I'm perfectly okay with when it comes to consuming for most things. Um, the only part I will point out to people, though, that I still am not okay with is those people or people condemning other people for not making that morally, um, that morally ethical consumer choice that they made. So we have all these things we can choose to morally um, consume or ethically consume. I don't know which one. I mean, you can switch them back and forth for the most part or how we use them. Um, so we have all these things that we can morally consume. If I choose A and someone else chooses B, it's like, so I'm going to choose to morally consume A, you're going to morally to, con uh, to consume B. I don't think it's fair for A to call you out and be like, oh, you should be morally consuming A, not B. I don't, I don't think that's okay. Because what you are morally consuming, someone could easily point to you and be like, you're not morally consuming this, so you're also wrong. So that just leads to nothingness. It leads to problems, in my opinion, and that's just stupid. So, if you want to morally consume something, perfectly fine, perfectly when you're right, have no problem with that. I'm not going to call you a hypocrite. I'm just being like, no, perfectly okay. You are choosing to morally consume this thing. All good. Go for it. Um, advocating for that, also no problem. If you want to advocate and say, hey, I think this is a big problem. I think other people should support this. And I would like us to like try and move to boycott this thing. Perfectly okay. Nothing wrong with more, nothing wrong with advocating for people to boycott it. Um, it only becomes a problem when you start attacking people for not for not boycotting and if you start calling them the thing that you want to boycott. So like um, for this example specifically, if you would call someone transphobic for buying Hogwarts Legacy and that's the only reason you're calling them that, I don't think that's okay. I don't think that's it's not constructive. It's not even it's not even like a good system to try and like get that message across because that's just it's not going to work and a hundred percent of the no i don't want to say a hundred percent of the time but like 99 percent of the time someone can do the same to you and it just it leads to nothing it's not good it's not constructive it's not gonna like nothing's gonna come out of that that will be able to be used and like make our system better <sighs> so now i got that out of the way so tldr sorry i this beginning part is like almost 10 minutes um tldr if you want to morally consume things Good for you. Perfectly okay. Um, I don't have an issue with that at all. I think it's dumb for people to call out those people and call those people dumb. If someone wants to morally consume someone and someone like on the sidelines like, oh, you're fucking stupid for morally consuming this, even though those are all the other things, that's also stupid. Get over it. We all understand we live in this system. It's good to pick and choose the things that you want to morally consume. That's good. It's good to be, to do a morally right thing in your eyes, right? So those people on the sidelines that are like yelling at people boycotting Hogwarts Legacy and just being like, hey, I don't support this. I think it's bad, so I'm not going to consume it. If you're making fun of someone for doing that, you're also dumb. That's stupid. Don't do that. And then on the, on the, on the flip side, people who are boycotting Hogwarts Legacy and then telling other people who do not boycott it that they are transphobic or that they are bad people for not doing that morally consumer thing, that's also pretty dumb. Not constructive. Not going to go anywhere. So yeah, uh, last TLDR. You want to morally consume something? Good. You want to yell at other people for more, not morally consuming the thing that you are morally consuming? Not good. Shouldn't be doing that. Also, if you morally consume some things, but not all things, you're not a hypocrite, at least not in my eyes. Impossible to be a morally good consumer all the time. I think that's impossible. So let's go down. Finally, let's go down and watch this video. It starts. No, I don't care. It's stupid. Harry Potter is stupid, and it's about time someone said it was bad because nobody in the history of ever has ever suggested. I'll say this I'm not a big Harry Potter fan to begin with.
I think there is a lot of dumb stuff in Harry Potter. I do. I just, I never got super into it. I read all the books and I watched the movies. And as a kid, they were pretty good. It was pretty fun to watch. But the super exact, uh, the super obsession with Harry Potter and some of their fans, it's a lot sometimes. It's kind of funny. But it, I mean, I wouldn't say it's complete terrible. Did the Harry Potter is bad. I'm a trendsetter. No, but it is stupid, though, right? We're supposed to believe that wizards and the wizarding world is so much superior to the muggles, right? We've got bones. They use owls. Chuds, right? If fucking I got the horrible, okay, right? It's just a meme. They're meme into my fine. fucking house and went, oh, you're a wizard, Stephanie. I'd probably be excited. Wait, what'd she, wait. I'd be all, oh, that's what'd she say? Horrible, right? But we've got bones. They use owls. Chuds, right? If fucking I got the horrible, right? Haggard the Horrible. I don't know if that's a jab. There was something that happened with the actor of Hagrid where before they passed, because I think they passed away recently. Um, I forget, they said something. They said something about J.K. Rowling where they weren't instantly like, um, they didn't like push themselves away from J.K. Rowling. They didn't give a stance on their opinion of of um like uh the whole trans question that was going on during that time um but i don't think they distanced themselves from jk and i think that caused people to attack them i don't know all i don't know all behind it and i don't know the actual views of uh the person who played Hagrid. i don't even know the person's name but um i don't know if that's maybe that was a jab at that i don't know bicycled into my fucking house and went oh you're a wizard stephanie i'd probably be excited at first i'd be all oh that's brilliant hey the horrible uh, uh, how do we go am i gonna go in a car what no we don't ride cars in the wizarding world we fly about on flippity doos what's a flippity they had do cars. well first of all you gotta get yourself an eight legged cars we're not gonna get on Right, I insist on bringing my 3DS. Hey, God. Have you got wall charges? What's wall charges? Oh, dear. Okay, then, so what do you do for entertainment? Oh, it's brilliant. We eat sweets that make you do elephant noises. Fucking what? And why is the shit with the all flavor beans? Right? I could, right, get a McDonald's, or I could eat bonbons that taste of literal sick and mucus. And we're supposed to think that this is charming and quaint. Well, it's not. Oh, Hagrid, how do we get to school? Well, first of all, you've got to go to King's Cross Station. Even if you're already in the wizarding world, you've got to get out of it and then run it first into a fucking wall. This is bollocks, right? If I were there, if I were there, okay. I'd sort it all the fuck out, right? I wouldn't bother with the fucking wands they've got. It's green dots, right? Oh, what wand have you got, Stephanie? Is that a dragon art string cord? No, it's a gun. And it's only got one spell. Bang, that's your Voldemort problem taken care of. <laughs> bang, bang, that's the fucking snake. Who's the snake? It's long, isn't it? I don't fucking care. I don't care what the one shop is. Okay. Olivia Newton Johns. I, I don't care that the one shop is Olivia Newton Johns. I don't give a fuck. I don't even want to do this episode. I've known it's coming for a year. And okay. I don't want to have yeah. to talk about fucking Hogwarts, right? I made my piece with the Harry. And I'm, I want to go back. I don't remember seeing within the last um, year or so uh, a video that they put out talking about this. Which. Of course, everyone was kind of surprised because it, it was a big deal. I, I, there may have been one video. I'm trying to remember. I should go back and double check. Um, I normally only currently like watch some of the bigger videos that they put out, but for the most part, I don't remember this. But as they're saying, it, it, it was inevitable. A lot of people were talking about it. And it was only a matter of time before the feeling of like having to put out a video where even I'm kind of feeling like there's a lot of shit talking, people talking about this. So like, sorry, there's a lot of shit going on with this. Not a lot of shit people talking about this. Harry Potter series. I made my piece a long time ago, but it's inevitable. It's here, and we've got to talk about it. The fucking wizard game. Uh, warning, of course, what you're about to see. Uh, there's going to be a lot of transphobic rhetoric uh, that I have to okay. show you uh, in order to talk about some of this shit. That is, we'll, we'll, we'll go into it. I am quote unquote happy about if they show exactly, because like I said, it's been a long time since I looked at specifically what JK Rowling said that like initiated all of this. Um, so it would be nice to see like some either direct tweets that she's mentioned or I know there was like a paper written about her or there was a book that she wrote about it, I believe, as well. Um, or maybe not a book, but like a, a piece that she made that like talked about all this. So it will be um, it will be good to see that like front and front or like, hey, this is what we're talking about. This is what we're like and have issues with kind of a thing, which is good because a lot of other people, there are people that I truly believe that heard of the JK Rowling thing, but have no idea what she said or anything. There's been numerous times where when I'm talking to someone, it's like, well, this is what she's accused of. This is kind of like what people view her as. And most people don't even know. I don't think the, I don't know if the average person knows what a turf is to begin with. Um, at least most people that I've talked to, which probably around the average person, um, whenever I say that, they're like, oh, what, I don't even know. Like they've heard the term, but they don't know what it means. 
So, let's talk about J.K. Rowling. Let's talk about Hogwarts Legacy. And let's talk about how allyship really works. How what really works? In order to talk about some of this shit. So, let's talk about J.K. Rowling. Let's talk about Hogwarts Legacy. And let's talk about how allyship really works. How ally shit really works. That's what they said. Okay. J.K. Rowling is a transphobe. This is a fact. Okay. It's a fact I've never seen disputed in good faith, only challenged by fellow transphobes who have a pre-baked line since these people read from the same script. What, oh, what did she it? say? Exactly. Yep. That is, that's, yep, that is what happens. People do transphobic. ask. Transphobic. But, wait. By fellow transphobes who have a pre-baked line since... Okay, I don't like that. I think it's fair. I think it... I think it's fair... To, for someone, for the average person to not know what specifically that, like, they could be hearing, because it's very easy for that, like, message to get populated out there. They're like, oh, JK Rowling is tra transphobic. I don't think it's fair to say anyone who asks the question, um, well, what did she say that makes her, like, that makes you all believe that she's transphobic? Um, there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. I think it's, I think it's fair to say, it's, it's fair for someone to ask that question. So just labeling them transphobic as well. I don't like that. Since these people read from the same script, what did she say exactly that's transphobic? Rowling couches her hatred in plausible deniability, but her daily obsession. <sighs> so I'll just read out loud. And as I've said, gender confirmation certificates may now be granted without any need for surgery or hormones. Then you open the door to any and all men who wish to come inside. That is the simple truth. Uh, gender confirmation certificates. I don't even know what that means, a certificate. Oh, I guess they're trying to say that you could, um, I guess what she's trying to say is this idea where if you, she's making, what's it called? Like a trans medicalist argument almost where some, some groups of people, or maybe it's, oh, I always get mixed up with these, with the different terms for these groups, um. There's something like true scum or something like that. There's like a group of people that in the that believe that trans people are only real if you go through and truly transition. So like if you go through hormone therapy or if you get surgery um, to identify as the gender that you that you are, then then you are trans then. But if you don't do that, so say that you're say like me, if I continue to just like live my life normally, kind of a thing, and don't really change anything, but I say that I'm trans, some some group would look at me he's like well no you're not truly trans because you didn't you're not going through hormone therapy you're not going so you're not trying to fix or quote unquote fix trying to like sh make changes to this so therefore you're not truly trans there are people that do believe that and um i guess what jk rowling here is saying is that there's a i believe a larger group of people i think the larger group is more accepting and more like open to the idea of people being like well no you don't have to go through surgery. you don't have to get hormones to be trans um if that's a uh, a feeling that you have for your gender and that's what you are well then that's what you are kind of a thing and then yeah you're trans nothing wrong with that um so i think she's talking about the larger group which i i do believe that is the larger group uh that says you don't have to have go through surgery you don't have to take hormones to be truly trans um saying that if that's true well then anyone can do this but the problem that she's coming up to here is that she's saying men will wish to come inside it's like well they're not from from what we're from what even the group is saying those are trans people. They wouldn't be just men. Those are people that are like transitioning or their gender identity is that, a, well, I'm assuming she's talking about women here because she's only pointing out men. Um, they're trans women. So she's already like putting in here that she, it is like saying that she doesn't believe it. That's what, that's the feeling I get when I see this at least. It takes on us her constant comparisons of trans women to men, her verbatim repetition. Yep. And they called it out like specifically at the end there Rowling couches her hatred in plausible deniability but her daily obsessive takes on us her constant comparisons of trans women to men yep so that's and that's like I think that was like that line there specifically points out that that's the view that JK Rowling has is that it opens the door for men to come here and it was like but if you're going with what the with what they're saying it's like well no they're not they're not men they're trans women that's what happened they're they they're trans they're not men um so yeah so that like they definitely points out the view that she has being like oh they're just men per verbatim repetition of gen many health professionals are concerned that young people struggling with their mental health are being shunted towards hormones and surgery when this may not be their best interests uh four out of one tweets i think that means i don't know enough about this um 
on its face, it could be that she's pushing something that isn't true. I'll be honest. I don't I don't know too much about that. I would be surprised because everything that I have heard has been where we have a pretty decent, currently a pretty I would say a pretty decent structure in place that you have to go, under my understanding, you have to go through quite a bit of time for youth, for kids under the age of at least 16, I'm almost certain. Um, there's a lot you have to go to before you even start even being like entertained for hormones. Like you have to go to a psychiatrist a few times. You have to get like the okay from, I don't even think it's just one psychiatrist. There might be like two or something. But there are checks that we have in place to make sure that we are only like giving these to people that that should be having them like we have these things in place um for the most part i if, if you find like one-off cases i'm sure you probably could but the but the main way that we do this is is differently so she could be purposely spreading or i guess choosing to be ignorant in the fact that um what does she say? My health professionals are concerned that young people struggling with their mental health are being shunted towards hormones so yeah so she's like saying oh we're just pushing people to um to be to like do hormones when they're like having some mental problems like I, I i don't think that's true i never read that i've never seen that and everything that i've understood of how our system works is that we purposely try to make sure that we're not doing that the critical talking points makes her feelings clear she follows joyce priar i don't know a reminder that helen joyce at the second from the right a big pal of jk rolling in her chums the trans community have been proved right time again about these vicious bigots if helen was happy to say she wasn't to eradicate us on camera what was she saying in private um hold on i'm gonna look up this person real quick uh what's this person's name it is helen joyce eradicate trans people okay I keep trans people wants to reduce number of trans Gender critical Arthur Helen Joyce says she wants to reduce the number of trans people. Shilling. Helen Joyce, author of Trans When Reality, is facing widespread criticism over the online discussion with Helen, uh, in which she said people who transition are damaged. Joyce, who has become one of the most vocal gender critical campaigners in the UK in recent years, said the movement is no longer in the consciousness raising stage. Consciousness raising stage, yeah. She said that gender critical movement cannot be forced on convincing every person in the UK of its views and then instead must get through the decision makers. So I'm guessing like law stuff. In the meantime, while they're trying to get through the decision makers, we have to try and limit the harm that that means reducing or keeping down the number of people who transition. We're keeping down, <laughs> that means reducing or keeping down the number of people who transition. Uh huh one of them is that every one of these people is a person who's been damaged but the second one is every one of these people is basically you know a huge problem to a sane world oof if you've got people whether they're transitioned whether they're happily transitioned whether they're unhappily transitioned whether they're detransitioned if you got people who've disassociated from their sex in some way every one of those people is someone who needs special accommodation in a sane world where we are re-acknowledged to the truth of sex. Hmm. I don't know why. I mean, people who have been damaged by it, the children who've been put through this, those people deserve every accommodation we can possibly make, but every one of them is a difficulty. Gender diversity is an interesting process. Many lesbians or gay men think that the people are damaged in social knowledge. Yeah, I don't. Um, a lot of people will. There, I'm sure. Like, um, people will make things back to like when people looked at gay people specifically. Um, this accommodation that they're saying. What is this accommodation that they need? Because if the accommodation is just the fact that the general society doesn't understand it, 
well then that could that can be a lot of things like just because like, the general society might not understand it therefore we need to like um re we have to like reassociate or not reassociate is it reassociate we have to reestablish like how society sees these things that's not a that's not a problem with the person it's not like that like the individual is damaged it's like well no we just were viewing this in a way that wasn't like the best the most correct or the best way to like view it for our society so like when there was a time when most people were like look at a gay person like oh that's fucked something's wrong there there were some accommodations that we had to make for gay people right but we're not looking back saying that gay people are damaged like that's ridiculous okay his best friends with and outright claims to be one of the many prominent terps trans exclusive radical feminists yep. these okay, cool. rebranded to gender criticals Her slide into oh i didn't know that i didn't know that that's a thing that people are calling gender critical or terps now I haven't, I've never heard of gender critical as like, I can't remember, but okay. As a result has been horrifying. She is a fan of Matt Walsh. A yeah, okay. <laughs> oh no. Okay, Matt Walsh is fucked. Um, I respect the courage you've shown on this issue, J.K. Rowling. Okay, this is Matt Walsh speaking. I respect the courage of J.K. Rowling, but many people simply cave the demands of trans activists and completely surrender truth and reality to them. The cowards are also villains in this story. They need to be held accountable. And your film did a good job. No, and your film did a good job exposing the incoherence of gender identity theory and some of the harms it's done. No. Many institutions I used to admire have unerratically embraced this dogma, but I reserve the ire for them rather than shouting coward at individual women. Wait, but I reserve my ire for them rather than shouting coward at individual women. Oh, I wonder if she, wait, that seems almost like a snap back kind of, um, at least at the end there, because Matt Walsh is saying that they are cowards. The cowards are also villains in this story. So like the people that don't speak up, the people that don't do anything, and it's like I reserve my ire for them. The people that um, the institutions that are embracing this like in, in her mind dogma, the idea of that being like oh trans people exist. Um, but I reserve my ire for them rather than shouting coward at individual woman. And that that last part sounds like a snap at him saying at Matt being like hey. Sure, you can look at like these women or people, not just women, these people that are being quote unquote cowards by not like standing up against trans people or something. But um But I don't I don't want to call individuals cowards when I think the actual problem is the institutions. That's what I think she's saying there. But the fact that she said that the the video the movie was good, I need to watch a full I need to watch the full movie um for his thing. I'm sure I could find it somewhere. But I do remember there were clips specifically going around where he even talked about, I think he was on Joe Rogan's podcast or something afterwards, and he talked about, like, the number of people that um, that have gotten, like, hormone therapy. And he was, like, thinking, like, millions of kids or something. And it was, like, nowhere near, like, by a factor of 10 differently. And this is a guy that apparently was, like, bragging about how much time he spent, like, looking into this stuff and had a whole documentary that people are like oh yeah this is a really good idea of trans people like, but he like by a factor of 10 or something was completely wrong about how many people are like getting uh, hormone therapy it's just insane like this person obviously matt watch obviously had a had a a bent way of thinking of like how he wants people to see this like it's so obvious so i don't know that's uh, that's pretty dumb Fascist so into fascism that he self describes as one and has made a career from accusing LGBTQ plus people of the very pedophilia he himself seems to be a fan of. She's uh -oh. liked tweets from the abjectly abhorrent lives of TikTok accounts, a notorious right wing platform that outs queer people and is used to organize attacks against drag shows as well as threats against hospitals. She retweets. Yeah, lives of TikTok's pretty crazy. Tweets unscientific drivel by queer phobes like Baroness Nicholson. She oh, wait, what does that say? I don't know what that, I don't know what that is. Peace, Sergey, if you agree. J.K. Rowling has retweeted a letter which claims that humans have existed for 500 million years. The letter by the anti-gay, anti-trans, anti-abortion Baroness Nicholson is attacking a library for canceling a talk by infamous transphobe Julie Bindle during Pride. Uh, okay, don't know those people. It's unscientific drivel by queer phobes like Baroness Nicholson. That seems like a little bit... Don't want to look that up. I'll just take it. I'll just take it for sure. Jeez. So far, everything that we looked up, the, like the other thing with the what's it called person... The Helen person seemed right. So I'll just, for now, I'll just leave that. Just however you please, call yourself whatever you like. Sleep with any constituing or consenting adult who will have you. Live your best life in peace and security. But force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real. I stand with Maya. This is not a drill. So, <laughs> keeping it down, literally starting off with dress however you please. Oh, whoops. Dress however you please is definitely attacking it's like going back to this idea 
And I'm going to I'm going to assume, and I think it's safe to assume that when J.K. Rowling is talking about that, she's talking about trans women. She's talking about what she would view as men dressing as women. And that's normally like the kind of attack that you would get when you're fighting someone who doesn't believe in trans people. You're looking at someone who is trans, transitioned, or even like appearing to be um, a female, and you're ask and you're saying, "Oh, you're just a man in a dress." That that is what I would. I think it's safe to say that's what she's saying here. Knowing like what she said and what we even just what we've looked at this video so far, I think that's safe to say like that's probably what she's doing. Uh, and she's trying to like sugarcoat and be like, see, I'm all OK with you doing all this. But force a woman out of their jobs for saying that sex is real. Also, this I, people say this all the time. And the only people that I've argued with um, are the people that are anti trans. Um, the I'll be honest, I haven't talked to too many trans people, but there's a few uh, I would say. I'd say at least four trans people that I've interacted in, like in the real world and talked to about these things. And all of them aren't arguing sex. No one's been, and even if you look this up, people are not arguing about the sex or the chromosomes or like, that's not what people argue. That's not what people are talking about very much. Almost all the time when they say like, we're talking about gender here, we are saying that gender is more socially constructed. And there's something in there that nor for the most part, for most people, it normally correlates with their sex, but it doesn't have to. Just because there's a high correlation with it, it's to its sex, which does seem to be for most people, it doesn't mean it has to, and it doesn't mean it always will. Um, so this is just, I, I don't like it when people will be like, sex is real, guys. Come on, it's sex. It's sex. Like, but we're not, we're not talking about sex. And trans people will not argue saying that their sex is not something. Like, we're not, they're not changing, quote, they're not arguing biology. That's not the point. That's not the goal. With Maya Forstater, who, after losing her job at a progressive organization over demeaning... Some transgender people have cosmetic surgery, but most retain their birth genitals. Everyone's equality and safety should be protected, but women and girls lose out on privacy, safety, and fairness if males are allowed in changing rooms, dormitories, prisons, sports teams. Um... <laughs> I might be crazy. I might be crazy. I might be crazy. I don't... I don't care for the most part about changing like what the thing that I can see most about like changing rooms and stuff like that is that we over sexualize the human body a lot and that's pretty cringe but I mean what what is I guess I'm trying to understand like what is, I, I, well, I, I don't know I don't think I'm crazy to think this I think it's fair to say like what they're saying I think they are saying like well, not fair. I want to say, like, most of the time they're arguing because whenever they bring up the bathroom thing, they're talking about, like, men assaulting women. That is what normally they're thinking, 100%. At least I feel like that's normally the case. They're normally thinking about that. Um, and I don't know why you think that having, like, gender-neutral bathrooms or gender-neutral changing rooms is going to, ch like, have a rise in, like, people attacking people. I just don't think that would happen. I just don't think that would happen. I... Yeah, I just don't. Um, prisons and sport teams, I think it's fair to say there are some people, there are some people who are trans that should, I think, that we would, it would be, if we had everything, like, perfect in our system, we wouldn't have prisons. But, I mean, if we had to, like, do it right, I think it's safe to say that some people in prison shouldn't be put in the quote unquote gender that they identify with. Because if we have someone that's trans, but has a bunch of different um, things that show for a different gender or something like that, I don't, I think it's safe to say that our priority is to make sure that this person is put into a situation where they are quote unquote the most safe and safe around other people um, for prison specifically, for sure. Uh, so I don't think that's, I think there are people, so pretty much, I think there are people that are trans that would go into the prison that they quote unquote identify with. So a trans woman might go to a woman's prison, but I think it's also possible that a trans woman would still go to a male prison. I think that is possible. Um, and it just depends on, I truly believe it depends on like how far either if they have transitioned, if they've been taking like uh, hormone therapy or something like that, I think that definitely plays a part of it. Same thing with sports teams. If you have someone, I think it's safe to say if you have someone to um, like the quote unquote mythical trans people that like trans person that um, conservatives would say it's like, oh, what's stopping like any big muscly guy just all of a sudden wanting to like 
demolish women and being like, oh, I'm actually a woman now. So now I'm going to fight in uh, women's sports or something like that. These people don't exist. This isn't – those people don't exist. So you're trying to, like, fight something that I don't think is going to happen. But if it ever did happen, I don't think it's crazy to be like, hey, if you haven't been, like, you never took hormone therapy, you haven't transitioned – you haven't done some of these things. I think it's safe to say that you are in a position where you cannot play in the specific um, section just because you are now trans. I think that is. I think that's fair to say. I think we need to have some limit um, in place that says, "Hey, sure, you're trans, perfectly fine, but because of like these things, we can't allow you to do this in this sport." I don't think that's crazy to say. For some things. Um, but I can see definitely in like lower kids, like definitely like kids sports, like in elementary school or high school for the most part, I don't think there'd be a problem with that. I don't a hundred percent elementary school. Cause I don't think there's a vast difference enough for most of the sports that they're playing. That's like, yeah, just put them all together. Who cares? Like it's fucking kids sports. Comments. Oh, and I just want to be very clear when people talk about this, that's for the most part. Well, I wanted to say this for the most part, the sports thing was always like, quote unquote a red herring or like a false flag in my opinion like people never really truly cared about this um but i will say i have definitely seen pro trans people there was that vice um there was a vice video that i watched back when they were talking about feminism and it did seem like there was a number of people that were perfectly okay or maybe they shouldn't go too deep into it they were perfectly okay with any trans person like competing in the sport that they transitioned to again i'm saying there are times where that's going to be okay, but I think it's safe to say there are also going to be times where we're not going to allow it. That's what I would – I truly believe that the average person would actually – and again, to say, they'll probably – it probably won't come up that much. It probably wouldn't happen. But in those cases, I think it would be fair to say that we need to look at this and be like, okay, in these cases, you can't. Like, we're not going to allow you to do it kind of a thing. Has dedicated her life to combating trans rights. She once sent accidental transphobic profanity to a nine – J.K. Verling tweets profane transphobic message to nine-year-old fan. As she has done previously, she claimed it was a mistake, but she says anyone outraged should take your citizenship and authority to elsewhere. Okay, that's a little fucking dumb. Freed profane transphobic rhetoric to a child on Twitter in 2020. Well, wait, wait, what'd she say? I do want to know what she said here. I'm curious. Her her response is fucking stupid. Take your censorship and authoritarian to elsewhere. I'm like, come on. You know there are some things you shouldn't be saying to kids. Year old girl after pasting a comment from an anti-trans website she was reading and copying at the time. She called criticism of this censorship and authoritarianism, seeming to defend her right to rope kids into her obsession. And she is obsessive. Scroll through her Twitter and you'll find that she thinks about trans people all day, every day. She yeah. herself has fought against Scotland's Mermaid's fishy links casting a Scotland's trans. Wait, when a Scottish government launched a const wait. Conciliation? Five years ago? I proposed reforms to gender recognition act. She also It'd be hugely surprising if some who believe self-ID to be the wrong way forward did not launch legal action. Push force through self-ID in Scotland over the protests of grassroots feminist organizations. Uh, I should read more up on self-ID. I'm iffy on self-ID. Currently, I'm more on the side where I, I think if we believe if we believe that people have a gender identity within them, I think that there's something about you that makes you trans. I don't think Anyone could be trans. I don't think everyone can be trans. I don't know if that makes sense. I do believe it's possible for someone to have something innately within them that makes them trans, that makes them feel trans. Like there's something about someone that makes you that way. But if you don't have that, I don't think you can be trans. I don't know, I don't know how else to say that. Because if we limit something to self-ID, well, then what are we actually looking at? Because that would be saying, me, technically... I'm never identified as trans. Um, I, well, technically, I don't, I don't know. I don't really feel like I have a quote-unquote gender identity. I don't feel it, but it could be because I'm not trans. It could be because I just, like, I've always ID'd myself as, like, what I was born. That's very possible. But um, for me, I don't think it would be genuine, or I don't think people would truly believe me if all it takes is self-ID. I don't think people, I don't think it would be necessary that people would believe, or people that know me well, people that really know me. I don't think they would, quote unquote, believe me if I said, oh, yeah, I'm trans. If I just said that and I, nothing else changed about me, I didn't do anything else, I don't think people would believe me. Um, and I personally think that there is something about that. But, yeah. So I'm, I, I should read more up on self-ID. But currently I'm not so into self-ID.
I think, I think there's more than that. I think there's more than that. Ignition reforms, scaremongering, and spreading outright lies about. Well, women and girls have presented well-sourced evidence. Uh, government bill letting you know of consequential illustration for women and girls, especially the most vulnerable. All has been ignored. I don't say what with those. And those consequences insult in result of the SNP government can't pretend it was warned. Law that would simply make being trans a tiny bit easier. She still has the nerve to act offended at accusations of phobia while literally campaigning against our basic rights. Jacob Rowling opposes gender recognition reform in Scotland. This kind of solution would make it easier for trans people to secure legal recognition of their acquired gender without a medical diagnosis. Controversy. Um, legal recognition of their acquired gender. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't know what legal recognition of their acquired gender without a medical diagnosis. Because uh, the only thing I could think, like, if I'm taking this to the extreme... I'm taking this to the extreme. I'm thinking of something like along the lines of um, say there is something that uh, matters from either an economic reason or whatever it may be, like a le some legal reason that people can then get or do or take advantage of by just saying that they are this thing um, without any kind of quote unquote evidence of it. Um, so like taking it to the extreme, I can... I guess understand why someone would be iffy about that, but I would have to like read through this and understand it. So, legal dignity. At first, she tried to keep. If sex isn't real, there's no same-sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many meaningful to discuss their lives. It isn't hate to speak the truth. No one's arguing that sex isn't real. At least the from what I've seen. People are not arguing that sex is not real, sorry. ...of someone who supports trans people but just has concerns and wanted to protect women's spaces, a long-time gender-critical dog whistle. She claimed her liking of transphobic tweets was just a finger-slipping, honest, and... Wait, what? Really? Did she say dog that? whistle. She claimed her... J.K. Rowling reps blame middle-aged moment for liking a tweet calling trans women... <laughs> oh, no. Okay, well, that can't... Well, we know that's kind of not true now because she's definitely, like... From her own words, it's like going just that way. Finger slipping, honest, and now she's an ardent supporter of Helen Joyce. Why we're, why we're trying to get through to the decision makers, we have to try to limit the harm. And that means reducing or keeping down the number of people who transition. Every one of those people is basically, you know, a huge problem to a sane world. Like if you've got. Okay. And I like that we have a direct clip. That is good. It's good. Like we looked it up and we heard the same comment, but it, I like, I like the more information you can give to people. That's good. People, whether they're transitioned, whether they're happily transitioned, whether they're unhappily transitioned, whether they're detransitioned, if you've got people who've dissociated from their sex in some way, every one of those people is someone who needs special accommodation. Every one of them is a difficulty. Oh dear. That's not big deal. Someone JK Rowling agrees with platforms is a friend of. Oh, yeah, that's what we read. The okay. people Rowling champions are fucking monsters. Here's GC figurehead Posey Parker telling cis men to patrol women's. Gender critical feminist Posey Parker wants men with guns to start using women's toilets. What? Bathrooms on the hunt for trans women. Talking about. You dads who maybe carry, I think that's what you say. Uh, I'm so done with the American lingo. Maybe you carry, maybe you don't. Uh, maybe you consider yourself a protector of women. Maybe you're that sort of man. Um, maybe you have a daughter or a mother or a wife. Uh, maybe, maybe you have a mother. Maybe you might have a mother. Maybe you have a sister. Maybe you just have some friends. Maybe you just think women are human and you don't. Wait, if you just think women are human, then men should be protecting other men too. Don't need any absolute connection with them to feel compelled to protect us. Um, us I as humans or us as women? I think you should start using women's toilets, men. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I wanna. I guess there. I, <laughs> that is. I. <laughs> that's so fucking weird. The whole goal of not changing the bathroom thing was so that men weren't using the bathroom. What? Because now what you're saying now, oh my God, that is actually so stupid. If I'm someone who my goal is like, oh, I don't want trans, I don't want like trans people using that bathroom because I don't want men, quote unquote, trans women. Like I don't want trans women, what they would say men going into women bathrooms because I'm like worried about the women in the bathroom. And by allowing trans women into that bathroom, I'm opening up harm that can be done to those quote unquote biological women in there. Then you now saying, hey, men, men who like identify as men and have guns, I want you to go into women's bathrooms to protect the women. Aren't you just opening up other men to be able to go into the bathroom and be like, oh, I was just in there because I wanted to protect women. I had a gun because I wanted to protect the women that were in there. 
What are you talking about? You're just opening it up. You're doing the same thing that you, the other people are saying. You're opening up men going into the bathroom that could quote unquote lie and be like, oh, I was just there to protect guys. Really? Like, what are you talking about? It's, a, it's, it's the exact same thing. So much for keeping women's spaces for women. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the Rowling fuck? Tried to be smart. She doesn't record. That's so stupid. That's so dumb. I herself, can't believe it. repeating the violent sentiment. No, she contents herself with laughing at us. That's how I saw him. I will never tell this to anyone, so <laughs> hopefully not with a trans transgender person. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a pleasure. Mm. Her slimy, cowardly what? behavior goes okay. back years. What's shown in this video so far is just from stuff I started collecting in the past year because I knew this subject was inevitable. While she's been careful enough not to use plainly direct hate speech, I don't think her deniability Many, myself included, believe we are watching a new kind of uh, conversion therapy for young gay people um, who are being set on a lifelong path of medi medicalization that may result in the loss of their fertility. Okay. This is another thing. Um, I don't think I don't think we're going to get there. I don't think we're even close to that. This idea that gay people can't exist because if... Um, Pretty much the whole idea being if um, if gender is just social and there's like some kind of norms or things that identify for women and men, um, then people that are quote unquote that are I don't know why I keep saying quote unquote people that are gay. Well, are they just showing? So like if I'm a man and I'm gay, am I just showing more quote unquote like feminine traits? So does that mean that I'm actually trans? So am I not if I no longer gay and I'm actually just a trans woman and I'm attracted to men? Well, then I'm not gay anymore. Um, do gay people even exist? And I'm like, I think that's way pushing it because I believe even though, again, gender identity can be deeply linked to um, sexual identity and just like your sex in general, even though it can be linked and for most it might be linked there, it doesn't have to be. There can be a dislodging where those two things don't have to line up perfectly. Um, so yeah, I think that's ridiculous. And I don't, I don't even see that even close to happening. I've never once thought, heard someone I'm sure, again, these people exist, but nowhere near to the extent where I'm hearing people that are, like, more happy about, like, transitioning and, like, being accepted for who they are. So, like, this idea that gay people are being turned trans instead, it's just, I don't think that's true. He's close to plausible anymore. Look at the lies she tells, the fascists she supports. Oh, Look at how much... I thought, they were gonna put, I, thought, I thought they were gonna put up a tweet of her, like, saying, like, oh, tr uh, like a... Um, Look at this poor gay man. It's like a, a trans woman dating or being with a man kind of a thing. I'm like, come on. She talks about us. This is not what someone who doesn't loathe us does. This is the activity of someone with a genuine, deep-seated problem. You don't have to believe me. You can believe the Harry Potter cast members who've condemned... Who's spoken out against J.K. Rowling's controversial trans comments. You can believe the historians who've catalogued a clear timeline of her descent into frothing bigotry. Or, if you'd rather, believe the Republican politicians who are... ...actually citing oh, her wait. words in their anti-LGBTQ plus legislative efforts. Believe the virulently... <sighs> Oh, there's Vosh. There he is. Gad Sad. I don't know who I don't know who Gad Sad is. I don't know. You are a queen, honey badger? I don't know. I don't know what that is. The honey badgers run events for listed male supremacist hate group. Oh wait. The honey badgers run events for listed male supremacist hate group, a voice for men. Okay. They're now calling Jacob Rolling their queen. Gotcha. Okay, that's what they say. Well, shut the fuck up, and she could have been almost un uncritically beloved for like a century. Woman would be quite a <laughs> I remember this. I remember when that happened. Right wing male supremacy group, honey badgers, who call JKR their queen. Believe the photos of her at GC meetings. Believe the trans exclusionary women's shelter she set up to replace the trans inclusive women's shelter that her movement bullied and harassed out of operation. Or maybe so it looks like, again, I thought we were coming at it. I thought this video was going to be more coming at, um, and I'm sure, I mean, we're <laughs> barely through this video. I thought this video was going to be more focused on um, uh, ethical consumerism and it looks like what we're doing is we're just laying the foundation to be like, hey, we're kind of we might talk about morally consumerism, but let's first lay the fact that this is a moral question because we do know that this person is bad. Um, so first, we're going to lay this out so that you can't argue on that level that we can't be like, oh, we're talking about morally bad thing. We're talking about like moral consumerism, but you can't you can't eject yourself out of this conversation because you're going to say that she's not actually a morally bad person. Like there's no evidence of that. So therefore, this question is like null and void. It's like, well, no. We laid this foundation, so now, if we agree on this foundation, and that she is, like, not a morally great person, and she's doing bad things that are hurting people, well, now the question is, is consuming her IP bad? Um, so that's where we're going to get to. You just believe J.K. Rowling when she says, it is dangerous to assert that any category of people deserves a blanket presumption of innocence. She meant trans people, of course, but if she's right, then hell, she gets no presumption either. She is... Wait, what? Yeah. <sighs> 
It is dangerous to assert that any category of people deserve a blanket presumption of innocence. Well, yeah, that's really stupid. People, like, argue all the time that's, like, one of the best things about our system is that we try to, like, you're innocent to proven guilty kind of a thing. Like, we should have a level of, like, belief in the in the good of people, I feel like. I feel like on a personal level, I think it's a really shitty system and place to live in if you think your average neighbor is going to shit on you and, like, take advantage of you. Even though it, it could be true, I don't think we can live our lives that way. We live our lives... When I go out to the store, I live my life believing that everyone around me isn't going to rob me all the time. Like, we live our life believing that people around us are going to follow, for the most part, our rules of society. So, like, giving them a presumption of innocence, like they're not going to do some fucked up shit to me, um, I think is is a good way to live. And if you're saying that we don't do that, well, then <laughs> what are you talking about? Just to assert that any category of people deserves a blanket presumption of innocence. She meant trans people, of course. But if she's right, then hell, she gets no presumption either. She is a turf, loud and proud, merry turfman, sure. as she so we would know, say, yeah. and has said... Oh dear. I've been out as a trans femme now for over two years, with my coming out much about the world around me has changed, be it through my new perspective or the difference in treatment I receive. There's a lot of good. I'm complimented by sweet old ladies who like my boots, I'm hit on by lesbians in Leeds, people in general say nice things about me and I feel more comfortable saying them back. Mostly, I'm nice. more confident. I like who I am and how I look, things that weren't true before. But while good things happened, and to be honest, 90% nice. of people really don't care if I'm trans or not, there are negatives. It's no secret what it did to my career. The way in which I'm criticised online changed. Suddenly I was diagnosed by commenters as I would be curious. I should. I never went back. I never. I never like ch checked up when this happened. Um, I'm. They're probably. They're probably gonna go into it right here. I am curious if they saw a big hit. I wouldn't be too surprised. My understanding of like the Jimquisition audience prior, like if we look back like I don't know. If we can look back like six, seven years ago, maybe. Um, it was either people that were watching and were already like kind of hate watching. I think back to like when people like really shit on shit on them for the Legend of Zelda review, uh, Breath of the Wild, because I believe I believe they got like a seven out of ten, which is still really good, and people were like really upset about that or something. Um, but it was either people that were already I think hate watching, or people that were like quote unquote really like hardcore into gaming. That's that's the feeling I get. I don't know if that's how true that is. But it was like the more, I feel like slightly more edgy kind of like review person. Kind of like almost almost like a total biscuit kind of. Um, someone that was like holding these people more accountable. And if it is like a more hardcore group, I think it's also safe to say that they probably would get a lot of like a decent number of like transphobic people like arguing with them. Which isn't, of course, not good. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I'm I wonder if they've ever talked about it before in another video. Is mentally ill, my age comes up a lot now, when my writing is tone policed, accused of being rude and screeching where it wasn't before. But most of all, the world has become scarier. Scarier because of the right wingers calling us all groomers and engaging in violence Real against fucked. us. Scarier Not because good. of the GOP and Tories scapegoating us and legislating yep. our rights away with increased ferocity. Scarier because of media outlets like the BBC engaging in transphobia as a matter of policy. The BBC's latest transphobic screed is a mockery of journalism. I'm gonna like that down. I actually want to look that up. scarier because of the people JKR has emboldened with her support the gender criticals who preach eugenics and well okay so I think I might know where they might be taking this argument but I don't know if I don't know how much you could give she's they specifically said JK emboldened them the one example that they definitely gave was um what's their name uh the one u.s congressperson using their uh jk rowling's words i don't think it's crazy to say that jk rowling has definitely had influence in it i also don't think it's crazy to say that we probably would still be at the same level even without jk rowling i think that is i think that is true i think we would still be here with or without jk rowling 100 percent. i truly believe that because people were still like if you about trans people, even before, like, it even only came out around 2018 about, like, J.K. Rowling being this way, I thought. It was either 2018, maybe 2019? Around that time, I feel like. Um, I truly believe we'd still be in the same situation. And partaken for analogy to call for our eradication. Scarier, because culturally and legally and increasingly physically, we've been staring down the barrel of genocide for a long, <clears throat> long time. If you're not trans... Staring down the barrel of genocide. I... I don't think I don't think we could say genocide. I don't think so. 
They say they're not actively being genocided, which is different. Staring down the barrel, I wonder how close. I wonder how close they truly believe we're at to genociding trans people. If we look at the affordability, not the affordability, the level of the measures that we've been taking to help trans people, even within the last four years, I th and the fact that currently, at least in America, I'll always say in America, sure, there's a lot of people arguing about this, mostly Republicans, of course. But the people that we've been progressing towards, I think this is just their like, I think Republicans are just using this as their, like, their scapegoat to try and get any kind of garnership. I don't think it's working very well. People, like, they're arguing these things, and there's, like, legislation trying to be pushed, but it hasn't been passed yet. If anything, I think we've been trying to make it easier um, for people to transition and trying to get them the help that they need. Uh, so, yeah. And the fact that Republicans have so much that they are complaining about, I think, also shows that we've been doing things that they disagree with. And if they're doing things that they disagree with, specifically on the trans thing, well, then obviously we're doing something. At least that's how I kind of see it, like as a backward way of thinking about it. Um, so I don't, I don't think, I don't think we're that close to a trans genocide. But again, I'm not in that situation, so maybe I'm just not seeing it the same way that they are. Of course, um, but that's where I would stand. I wouldn't. I currently would not call it that. If you're not sub also, depending on how close you are to a trans genocide, I feel like you would be compelled to do something depending on how close the genocide is um i wonder yeah i wonder when you would be okay with then committing some kind of acts of violence well aware of how there's a new attack on us and our rights multiple times a day every day you won't quite know how bad it is it's horrific it's exhausting we're less than two percent of the population but we're called an epidemic we're demonized in the press with True, extremely disproportionate fuck. coverage yep, and wealthy fuck. powerful people like jkr can't stop thinking about us look some people might be delighted to hear this from me but i'm going to admit it plainly okay i'm afraid I'm really, Wait, people, oh, really afraid. Saying. And every day, for months, I've seen a video game that directly benefits one of the largest sources of that fear promoted on the PlayStation Store and Xbox Live, hyped up by the gaming press and championed by a community with a long-running vein of transphobia running through it that goes back to the hateful protests against a bit part trans NPC in Dragon Age Inquisition. Every day, a constant... Wait, really? Oh, I didn't even know about that. I didn't even know there was a trans person in Dragon Age Inquisition. Never played any of the Dragon Age games, so I wouldn't, but I didn't know that was a big thing. I didn't, I guess I didn't follow too much games media back then, but. Reminder that we as trans people have so few friends, so few allies. Every day a reminder that the game industry and community are contemptuous. You know, as much as your gamers TM have. So few friends, so few allies. I don't. The majority of the. I feel the majority of the Democratic Party currently in America is trying to push towards that. That's what I feel. I'm part of that party and I feel like I'm advocating for those things. So maybe I'm just seeing that, but. I agree there are a lot of other people on the other side that aren't for that either. But I, I don't know. I Unless I'm the one being attacked, I can't truly feel like what that must be like. So I, I don't know. Um, it's just how I view it. Tried. You've not owned me by posting the glowing review scores for Hogwarts Legacy or boasting about it. Also sex. cringe. People that were doing that, so cringe. Oh, I hated it. Oh, it's so cringe. People that are going being like, ah, oh, gotcha libs because it, it did well. It's like, oh, okay, okay, dude. That just proves what I knew, that people don't give a fuck. That's not new information. It's not a surprise. It's half of the course. That's all. Those of you actively trying to harass me over it aren't the actual offensive ones. No, the offense comes purely from the self-described allies who want to have it both ways, who want to play their wizard game and get really upset when criticized over it. Or the media outlets who justify their uncritical reviews by having- So I'm trying to write that down, knowing that condemnation I could receive, it's an extra, who, oh, and Dadrit. It's an extra light version of the dread I felt while publishing literally anything during Gamergate. But this time is more personal. The hate would be coming from people I actually care about. Having the fucking nerve to compare our protest against them to fucking Gamergate. I I don't know enough about Gamergate. <laughs> but I don't I don't know if that's a fair I don't think that I don't know if that's a fair criticism to be like these people are comparing it to a time when they felt so they're explaining, hey, I felt really iffy about posting some things during this time period. And I'm also feeling that way now. And for some people that might be true, that might like, I don't see that as like, quote unquote, like how dare they kind of a thing. It's like, what, I, I don't know. I don't like that. I don't like that kind of that view of it. If someone is scared because they are seeing people like get attacked for this, that's not good. And hopefully I would hope that um, Stephanie would agree with that that hey 
if you're being attacked for reviewing a game, that's not good, right? I think that would be, I think that's safe to say that they would say that's not good. It shouldn't happen. Transphobes, you need to up your game because none of you will ever be as insulting as a self-styled cis ally who wants trans people's permission to not take a stand. Oh, and I love how the same gamers TM who spent nearly 10 years calling game reviewers corrupt suddenly started trusting and touting them when a game they rallied around got eight to nine. That's also true. People that fucking would attack like IGN for like any review that's above an eight or something, they'd be like, oh, fucking IGN, why would I send that? And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, see, IGN said it's a nine, guys. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that crazy? It's like, okay. Interesting. Interesting that now it's like, oh yeah, IGN totally, totally okay with their reviews now. That is pretty stupid. Some of them even tried to twist Gamergate's ethics in game journalism pretext to defend outlets like IGN from criticism. IGN! <laughs> Suddenly the ethics brigade are standing for IGN, the too much water website, the site whose credibility they've done nothing but meme. Way to prove that you've only ever wanted to be agreed with. You'll True. suddenly stop believing reviewers True. were paid off and attacked me when I posted what I'd heard from a Warner Brothers contact, but WB stacks a little extra yesterday. They stacked the deck with who they sent review codes to, hence why almost no retributable outlet got a code, and I was told they worked with IGN heavily to find their one writer who would touch it and be kind to it. Oof. If that's true, that's, that's kind of weird. The deck and only gave review codes to outlets it trusted to give positive reviews. Like, that wasn't even a shocking revelation. It's a known fact this happens. An expected practice. I've covered the deck stacking elimination of wild card reviewers for years, but now I'm lying. Now game reviews are above board. <laughs> oh, by the way, I've never believed game reviewers are paid off. That's not what happened with Hogwarts. Reviews aren't high stakes enough that publishers are going to bribe over it. No, the yeah. sad thing is that there doesn't have to be bribery. Search yep. engine optimization is all outlets need to keep covering games as enthusiastically as possible. Hell, they wouldn't even refuse to cover Ubisoft games after all the sex abuse. They can't be trusted to do the right thing. While I don't think game critics outright lie, I think they have an incentive to not rock the boat to do conspicuous things like, say, litter a Hogwarts legacy review with so many. Any negative statements it sounds like shit and then give it a nine out of ten hold on okay someone else said this to me i don't like this this is a this is a very much a side thing it's just about reviews really at this point for this these are negative things that they definitely said this is the ign review they're talking about so um they definitely said some bad things about the review and you can't say that oh well, actually we'll just let them say it again like say litter a hogwarts legacy review with so many negative statements it sounds like litter it like have so much in there where you come away thinking like oh it sounds like absolute shit but if you read the review they are glowing about a lot of the game too and i don't think it's crazy to be like there are games that could feel again if we believe that reviews are subjective there's no possible way that we disagree that a game can have problems feel have some issues that we view and be like oh this is a problem but still come away being like I fucking love this game and this is and i personally will give it this rating because of these po these positives outweigh these negatives um like, come on, come on. Like shit, and then give it a 9 out of 10 regardless. From a general fear of controversy to wanting to avoid Game Boy harassment and, of course, maintaining a good enough relationship with publishers to keep having access, they've plenty of reason to go soft on big name. Um, I used to think that maybe they wouldn't do that because uh, the game, the people, the people putting out the games also, like, require that. Like, they want people with big names getting out information about their game, but I don't think they really need that anymore. So I do think the ball's more on the side of the publishers now and that the reviewers are kind of like trying to make sure they stay they they could it is possible that they could be staying in good graces by giving like better reviews because of that but i don't i don't know how often that truly happens games i left the escapist in 2014 because parent company defy media refused to publish my review of assassin's creed unity and jeopardized their relationship with ubisoft i'm famously blacklisted by konami for being such a harsh critic the pr company 47 told me ea wouldn't send me review copies because i'm a wild card the only access i get to gaming comes from sources acting alone that need anonymity because they're not allowed to talk to me my standing in the industry that is to say no standing is the result of doing everything my former peers are incentivized not to do i burned every bridge i had for not wanting to play with deeply corrupt organizations and i'm proud of it i also acknowledge that i can afford to not play in that sludgy water most reviewers can't i scarcely blame them for the system they're stuck in i've been there I know how it is, and I don't think reviewers are unethical so much as forced to compromise with unethical companies while in the thrall to the all-important SEO. They're not paid off, but as we've seen with Hogwarts Legacy and with how quickly they wanted to move on from mentioning Ubisoft and Activision's abuse in their game coverage, not many of them have any damn principles. Multiple times in the past few years, press outlets had opportunities to make a stand. They did not. So yeah, to the Born Again Potter mm -hmm. fans who spammed me with screenshots of IGN's big old nine, I'm not sure what you'll prove other than your yeah. critical opportunism. You'll be back to calling game reviewers SJW soon enough, true. won't you? you I know sure I'm not changing will. any minds here. Sure will, they sure will. The bigots and Potter fans and people who just want to enjoy a video game made their decision. The allies who want to separate art from artists or hate JKR but just always wanted to Skyrim a Hogwarts made their decision. And regardless of intent, all of you look exactly the same to JK Rowling. See, while people have tried to justify Hogwarts legacy by saying JKR had no direct involvement. Ooh, okay. I'm a little I see where we're I might I see where we're going and I don't know how I feel about this. I'm sure they have Okay. They have to. They have to like bring up people like 
pulling comparisons to other things. And I am curious how they would justify this because currently it sounds like they're going down the route that I am. I pointed out being like, I don't think this is a good route. I think saying, hey, you, it, I think this is bad and I'm going to boycott it. I think others should boycott it too because I think it will lead to a good. Um, perfectly fine, perfectly great. If you then look at people that are consuming it and then saying, oh, you are as bad as the thing that I am trying to remove, I don't think that is a good way of going about it. And I don't think it's true. And it just opens you up to being okay with other things. You can choose to morally consume things. And there are things that, as they stated in this, that they are morally consuming. Or morally doing like burning bridges and like being like, I'm not going to participate in the system by doing this for these things and that they are able to do that in their thing. But um, so they admit that they do that for some things, but I doubt and I think they will even admit that it's impossible to do it for all things. Allies who want to separate art from artists or hate JKR but just always wanted to Skyrim a Hogwarts made their decision. And regardless of intent, all of you look exactly the same to JK Rowling. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oof. I got to rewind. They look the same. We look the same to J.K. Rowling. So we don't look like J.K. Rowling. She views us the same. So she's looking at the people that, quote unquote, she's, I think they're going to go down the emboldenment path where she might feel emboldened by this, um, by people playing her game or like, oh, these are people that I can influence more kind of a thing. I don't think that's a good argument currently. Um, curious what they would say. My current, my current stance when I've heard that before is like, I don't know if, let's say that, Let's say that no one talked about her. Uh, say that she had she's transphobic. Say that she is transphobic and she has these opinions, and she didn't really say anything or do anything. I don't know if. So she is transphobic, but she's never said anything about it. And then this game comes out. People buy it, and people and a lot of people are playing it. I don't think her looking at oh look at all this influence I have over people is going to like change her rhetoric. Or anything like that. I think that even with or without Harry Potter's thing, she would still have these same views. Now you can say that these views get pushed further and are more um, available to like populate because of her status and where she's at. And while I believe that is true, I don't think her status is going to change at this point. The fact that she will always be known as the person who made Harry Potter and made this giant industry, I don't think that's ever going to change. Um, the only thing that you can do is like we say, hey, this came from something that's really fucked up. Not good. Just pointing that out there. See, while people have tried to justify Hogwarts legacy by saying JKR had no direct involvement, that doesn't change the fact she makes direct money from sale. No, we're going down the money sale. I don't, I would hope, I hope they put a preface saying like, it doesn't even matter because I'm almost certain, I'm almost certain that if I would ask, so are you telling me that if we 100% knew that she, that JK Rowling no longer has the rights to to, to Harry Potter, and she will not make one penny on any sales of this game. Would you still? Would you be okay then? I don't think I. When I've asked people that that are like boycotting this, they told me no, they would still not buy it. I'm like, okay, so I don't think it's just about it's not the money. So I don't know if this is a good argument, but more importantly, it doesn't change the truly insidious aspect of Harry Potter's continued success. Cool. JKR takes it as explicit. Doesn't change. Okay, so it looks like yeah, that's just like a side thing. But this is like people that would argue that she's not getting or like not part of it. She is still benefiting from this. So even that's wrong. She is still benefiting from it. So just pointing that. That's good. Okay. So we're moving on. Is it endorsement of her views? She thinks the success of Harry. Hold on. Importantly, it doesn't change the truly insidious aspect of Harry Potter's continued success. JKR takes it as explicit endorsement of her views. She thinks the success of Harry Potter means. Okay, but you could, just because she thinks that, I don't know if that matters. If, so the, the way I'm thinking about this, and I'm wondering where, where they go down this, the way I'm thinking about it is like, if I had someone who, if I do something, so say I enjoy a video game, and they're telling me, oh, I think because you enjoy that video game, you think this thing and it makes me go do something. It makes that person go do something and morally bad. Say that person, like they watch me play a game. It makes them think a certain way. They go and um, they go and do something bad. I don't know if I can be morally culpable for that. I'm at some point we have to separate ourselves and be like, well, just because that person thinks a certain way and they're going to do something because of me quote unquote, because of me, it's really because of them and what they're thinking and what's going through their brain. Um, 
I don't think I can put the fault on an individual. Because I could take, because you could just take it to the extreme. If they see me breathe, they might think of something and then now go do a terrible act. Am I immoral for breathing now or something? Like, just because I do an action, and I know I'm taking it to an, that is an extreme. I understand that's an extreme. We could take it back to something that is an extreme, like something that isn't necessary. Like, if I have a peanut butter sandwich and I have a turkey sandwich, and if I eat the turkey sandwich, this person's going to go kill someone. If I eat the peanut butter sandwich, they won't. Am I morally culpable if I eat the turkey sandwich? I don't think so. That person's crazy. That person is insane. I can't be morally responsible for that. Even though I do have the choice, even though I know the difference, I probably would, in that moment, take the peanut butter sandwich. But I don't think I'm morally culpable if I take the turkey sandwich. People agree with her, and she's said so before. There is no difference in hers or any other turf's mind between the people who bought Hogwarts because they wanted a fun wizard game and the people spite buying it to demonstrate the powerlessness trans people already feel. Inten but that's on them. I don't... We'll see. I'll let, I'll let the whole argument go out. It doesn't matter. You're all just supporters to her. You are all permission. This is why you aren't an ally if you buy Hogwarts Legacy. No, buying the game doesn't make you a transphobe, and I'm tired. Okay. 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 So, middle ground. That's good. Hearing the self-martyring whinging about that. I'm not saying you're transphobic for buying Hogwarts Legacy. I'm saying you're not an ally. You handed that card in because you couldn't do the barest minimum. You couldn't make the simplest. What do you call, I don't, I wonder what they would, what do you call someone who's not an ally? What are, what are people then? Is someone just indifferent? Is it just indifferent to people suffering or something? I don't know. Stand. It's not that hard to not buy a triple A video game. You chose sure. a product over people. And in doing so, you helped JK Rowling say things like this. When I How do you sleep at night knowing you've lost a whole audience from buying your books? That's how it feels to have alienated so many queer fans. I read my most recent royalty checks and find the pain goes away pretty quickly. That's what you do. You empower a fascist supporting transphobe. Some of you celebrate that you've done it. Some of you wring your hands and excuse it. The result's the same. So enjoy. Not a single one of you are under any obligation to refuse this game. I'm not demanding it of you, and I'm not going to say okay. you're an inherently bad person for it. Okay. But I do not trust you. I can't count on you. I can't think you have our backs. I can't feel safe with you. And sorry, but you don't get to feel hurt by that. You get to enjoy your media product. I get to remember every digital... Sure. You're perfectly free to feel the way that you want. You're perfectly free to not trust people because of some actions that they did. Perfectly acceptable. You can do those things. I think the question would be, is that a valuable mentality? And is that a valuable way to view people? I think that's... a a better way to look at it. Not saying that you can do it. Of course you can do it. Of course, and of course it's perfectly okay for you. We want to talk about if it's valuable. Digital storefront that took a Hogwarts sponsorship. Every games journalist that promoted it. Every platform and company that embraced it. And I get to remember that when Pride Month rolls around and the performative allyship begins, your rainbow logos won't count their shit. It hardly needs to be said, but any of you who claimed you bought it to support the developers can especially get in the bin. Oh, they worked hard and should be supported. That's probably the dumbest attempt to lionize consumerism I've ever seen. <laughs> I've seen this excuse so much and I'm like, how dare you? How dare you lie to me so fucking brazenly? You don't buy games just to support developers. You buy them because you want to play them. Tell me, do you buy literally every single game that's ever made and released? If you're motivated purely by dev support, that's what you do, right? Every game is developed by game developers. So why aren't you buying every game? Every single... Well, they would... Oh. Okay. I admit I take things to extremes. This is also an extreme. Um, when, we, when people say they want to... Uh, when people say that they want to um, support game developers they want to support game developers that they believe are quote unquote doing something that is quote unquote correct in the system that they're in so like if someone makes a good game i want to reward the developers i think hey they spent a lot of work on this it's good it's like things that people would want in our current society but um and so therefore i want i think they should benefit from that therefore i want to give them money if someone creates a game that is not good and that they don't want well then of course they're not gonna well, no you, you create something i don't like you create something i don't want um, so no, <laughs> I think that's an extreme. You don't need to buy every single thing and still believe that there are people. I believe I am one of them. When a game comes out that is interesting, I am going to buy it pretty early on. I'm going to buy it for full price. And I'm going to buy it right from the people because that is like the way to show my support. And that is a way for me to be like, Hey, this is how I can give the most amount of money to the group of people that are creating things that I like. Um, and I'm able to like, I'm in a situation where I can do that. So those people exist hundred percent. And I, I don't have to buy every single game to believe that. Single one, get the fuck out of here with that blatant bullshit. Of course, it's bollocks from a results standpoint too. The devs got paid already. They get paid for their work up front. Unlike JKR, they don't. And of course, we're not talking. Even if we want to go down the like, 
the super technical paths. Like we all know that a bunch of these systems are a bunch of these groups also get paid different bonuses depending on how well the game does. We also know that they'll look at those people and what they've made. And if the game does well, they're more likely to find better work in the future that gives them the opportunity to make more of things. We're not like, I feel like this is pretty like blatantly missing the point. And get royalty checks. They're not the ones supported by your purchase. She is. Warner Brothers. They are obviously supported. If a game, if a game developer makes a game and it sells a bunch, when if they had a publisher or if they had um, someone that funded the game and they've already like they've gotten the money for that game that they were going to get, other than the bonuses, like I already said, um, which not everyone gets, I admit, not everyone, but um, that game developer is going to go off and be able to make more money if they more likely to go off. Of course, there's exceptions. More likely to go make more money, make have more opportunities if the game that they made sold well. That's not insane. We know this to be true. And I think it's disingenuous to act like that's not like what people could be saying or what people mean. I don't like I think that's pretty obvious. But it's, okay. those are the beneficiaries. As we've discussed on this show before, game studios mostly live or die regardless of the success of one game. And thanks to the way public companies work, they're sometimes hurt by it as layoffs often follow an influx of revenue to maintain the illusion of financial growth. Corporations don't operate based on customer support. If they did, we'd get more single player games and fewer ones based around financially exploiting a minority of whale players. You're not supporting the devs that tossed in a token trans character called Sir Owner Ryan explicitly to try and steer us all away from the subject of JK Rowling. An old acquaintance did some work on the Hogwarts game. Wait, an old acquaintance did some work on the Hogwarts game. Didn't have much juicy to say other than the game is mediocre and his RPG customization elements are vastly oversold. I'm told they added a token trans NPC to pivot the conversation away from JKR. They are barely in it. Um, It is possible they do that. I don't know enough about the character to, to say whether or not it is, quote unquote, what you would say, a token character. I don't like this idea of calling characters like this token i think it's possible that they can be doing that um but then you're kind of in the same like the same way that you were talking about like people comparing this to gamergate or something or people like saying like oh ign oh i truly believe in ign now all of a sudden when we know they were attacking ig before you're almost on that line where you're like oh um they made uh i don't know i'm thinking of like maybe apex oh they made this carrier character non-binary for the token character um, or oh, they made this person black in this game because they're token. Like people that would actually attack these things and attack these, like oh, why that have to person to be black? Oh, because they're a token. I don't. You 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 are kind of like going down that line of sounding like those kind of people. So you're associating your say similar like you were you were claiming those people were associating with those people. That's kind of what you're doing here. Not not very good. Um, is it still possible? Hundred percent, it's possible. Hundred percent that that it is just a token character. It can happen. Token characters definitely exist. It's definitely a thing support wasn't even your intent that's a retroactive justification for something you were always going to do and honestly fuck any of you who've come at me in the past few months with that excuse or any other excuse that attempts to paint your purchase of a video game in a noble light you're not noble um yeah you're definitely not, i wouldn't say you're noble i definitely i mean if you're people who people who like the people who like games video games i think there are ways that you can support that um that medium, you can support those people or support that system um, in such a way that is positive and negative. So I just think that some people could choose, and you have choices that you can make that can actively support it in a positive way and a negative way. It's not wrong for people that think that they are choose to do things in a positive way and be like, oh, I'm doing this because I want to support it, so I'm going to choose to be a po like do it positively. And there are other people that choose to do it negatively. I don't think it's wrong for people to be like, oh yeah, I'm doing I'm doing like the quote unquote positive way. I'm doing it like quote unquote the, the better way. That's definitely possible and definitely true. You're not a fucking hero. Play the game if you must, but yeah, you're not a hero. Don't you dare tell me you did it for any reason other than self-service. Don't you ever, ever look to me for validation. Expect me to assuage your guilt. Toss hypothetical scenarios at me that you think allow you to have it both ways. Just play your fucking wizard game. How you feel about that is not my problem. You clearly decided how we feel isn't yours. Sis feel. Um, yeah, feelings are other, uh, yeah, sure. You don't have to care about the other person's feelings, of course. Um, our feelings are our feelings and all that stuff. And people are allowed to feel what they want to feel. But again, we want to talk about those feelings. We want to talk about like, are they productive? Are they valuable? Um, why are we feeling this way? And is it a good thing to have? I think there are some feelings that we understand that, oh, I feel this way because someone did something. Like you would agree that if, like the example I gave where someone feels like they have to do something because someone else did something, that's, a, that's kind of like a bad thing. You don't want to have those feelings um, or you want a way to like rationalize those feelings sometimes. So 
having feelings, perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. But we want to like, like talk about like, okay, why are we having these feelings? What are those feelings? Have, what are those feelings? Why are we having them? And what are we going to do because, because of them? Things aren't our responsibility. It's so telling that the only real coverage of alleged harassment in games media this week. Twitch chat braves streamer to tears for playing Hogwarts Legacy on launch day. It's been about cis streamers getting upset at some mild pushback. It's a really old play. Um... I'm a little iffy on this last half because I feel like there have been some slightly disingenuous points. Um, I'll be fair for now and say, like, I'll take their word for it that it was pretty maybe light pushback. But I would have very different feelings if I went in and I saw, like, the chat messages. You know what? We're just going to look it up. We're going to look this. We're going to look this up because now I'm, I'm just a little iffy about it. Was this Sextario that wrote this? Yeah, okay. Let's see. Streaming couple girlfriend reviews were forced to end their usual streaming content early after one member of the couple was re was reduced to tears as Twitch chat began writing rude comments. Well, how rude? Okay, okay now they're saying rude. So now I'm, <laughs> now I'm actually going to be on the side where maybe, maybe it was just slight pushback and they fucking broke down over it. Let's see. Ugh. One of the best games. As a result, the game has already been boycotted by many. Both online discourse, blah, 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 don't care. Streamers are already being hit with abuse online just for playing the game. In a recent stream, content creator couple Girlfriend Reviews hopped on a live broadcast to play through some Hogwarts Legacy early. However, during the stream, Matt and Shelby were being verbally attacked in the chat to the point where Shelby had to step away from the stream, clearly upset and sounding as though she was on the verge of tears. Most things are just going on. I barely get into second combat here, and every time I look at chat, the conversation is just bothering me. Began Matt. So maybe we can do a quick be right back. A little break. Then one in the chat. Well, what were the what were the chats? I'll just stop talking and go fight and do the combat. Listening in, you can then hear Shelby leave the room. Clear stress. Y'all done it. Y'all done did it now. We we'll post on Reddit with the users fending over and calling out those who were commenting negative things in the chat and causing the tears to flow during the Hogwarts Legacy. These guys are so wholesome so too. Well, wait, they don't let me give the comments? What did they say? There is no ethical concern. Oh, I don't care. Wait, where's the... They had to have taken down the video, right? Sorry, I'm actually super curious. I, I, I really want to know what they said. Good way to support trans white. Don't be a death eater. Donate to the Trevor Project. They even had a bot in here. Okay, well, I haven't seen what they said yet, but they had a bot in here promoting uh, the Trevor Project, which is the pro-trans group. Yeah, she said her royalty checks prove that people agree with her. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Well, wait, this might be where kind of where they're saying about it. In Mexico City, Gringos, that wasn't in the script. Oh, don't worry, isn't even live. Enough spoilers for today. See ya. I think this place one week. Is there a way to just get chat logs? Jacar did say she is very happy to get paid for this game and its success reflects on her, so I think that might be why people are rooting against this game. Goblins are literally anti Semitic. In before, it's just a single. Should 
prove that people agree with her. Another bot. Please make room. Don't make room. Just ignore it. Review is just a link to the Trevor Project. We. As long as you do your duty. What the fuck? Hold on. She says the success of her IP indicates she's right, so IDK if it's still hers, but the quality of the game has nothing to do with her views. I can't believe you're giving exposure to the game that at the very front of every store page right now and top selling everywhere. I can't believe you're giving exposure. Okay. If you're if you were slightly taller, those oh, okay, the people talking about the game too. This bet is wild today. I, I'm okay. So yeah, I. Did you just? No kidding, my trans friend who will be playing this game at midnight tonight will have some serious fun. Yeah, I'm not seeing. I'll be honest. I'm not saying too much. Quite some of the questionable things with house elves and goblins. Okay, I think that Harry Potter in general is about acceptance and about you know being different and like being accepted and shit and she went and she had to ruin it by saying all her dumb shit yeah. but I, that doesn't mean that I don't think Harry Potter can no longer continue to teach people those lessons and make people happy let's enjoy Harry Potter the one good thing she fucking did mm -hmm. okay she's already a goddamn fucking billionaire like it's there's nothing no games no movies no toys there's probably lines of sand ally straw and HP hot take people draw out weak lines in the same ally straw it at HP but don't draw it at Warner Brothers who pays JK for HP Still buy and watch DC content, which also owned by Warner Brothers, etc. No, you're not. Imagine because your boundaries don't reach the extremes of someone else's manipulative. Um, the way they're saying this is a little weird. This one comment does kind of go about what I'm saying. The idea that you're not an ally or a bad person, which, to be fair, Stephanie does not say you're a bad person, um, but that you're not an ally or a bad, a bad person because your boundaries don't reach the same. They say say extremes. I would just say the same level of someone else is manipulative. I think that I don't know if I would use the word manipulative. Maybe a little bit, because I think you are trying to get across a message here um, by being like, I don't see you as an ally because you don't meet the same level that I am at, um, which you're allowed to do. You're allowed to have that feeling. <sighs> okay, let's keep watching. This stream is getting upset at some mild push. So, yeah, I, I, I didn't see anything. I was expecting, like, way more. Um, so at least for this part. I don't see people like commenting about the hate unless they were unless the comments got removed or something, which I guess is possible. You guys need to be able to spread the opposite of JK's views with your review, guys. It's weird how some people have bad ideas, but it doesn't totally discredit them. Probably for shame because. She... Oh wait, who's this? Like, just, yeah, I don't know if they just, stuff. I don't know if they just removed the chats or something, because I'm not seeing any actual, like, pushback. It's people mostly agreeing with them. What a novel concept that both support the stream. JK, just didn't apply. Okay. Back. It's a really old play. Whenever trans people advocate for them, yeah, it does, I I'm not seeing anything in the chat, but again, I'm just like kind of scrolling through. Selves, we're painted as unreasonable bullies. Unsurprisingly, I've been asked to answer for the alleged harassment because minorities are always expected to take responsibility for each other. You know what? I'll answer it when I can go a day online without someone saying something truly vile about me. When I can stream without. They don't have to answer it. Don't have to. They don't have to answer it. But we do know that it definitely happens. Hundred percent. We can just look at the whole. Actually, I don't know if I want to say it. Um, it definitely does happen. There are some, every group has these people that definitely like quote unquote bully. 
Um, both of them can take it pretty far. I'm not both signing it. Obviously, there's one side that does it way worse, way more. It's like a bigger issue. But to say that, but we can't just look at someone that is quote unquote like an innocent person and they are getting like attacked or bullied for something along these lines. It's still not, it's still bad. And I'm pretty sure anyone would agree it is bad. Harassment myself. When I can post a selfie without being called a man or getting some other derogatory comment. When what trans people go through gets as much attention in the press. And when I feel people give as much of a shit about all of us as one cis person. If all that happens, I'll prostrate myself before you on behalf of all transes everywhere. Until then, this'll do. Check out the big one that they're hailing as like the- Innocent streamer who got harassed off the live stream. Innocent streamer who got harassed off of the live stream. And what I have learned is that y'all genuinely think that accountability and basic criticism is the same thing as harassment and discrimination. Yeah, I- so from what oh wait is this what they're kind of talking oh did they find that oh thank please tell me that they found the the comments because yeah i didn't see anything in the comments that was like super bad but again oh wait here we have somebody saying lng transphobia because obviously they think that it's a big joke and then uh well that's kind of disappointing then we have yikes then we have yeah i don't know <sighs> okay yeah i don't care how much you donate to trevor project i'm done unfollow so fast i get yeah this is like yeah i'm not seeing anything it, again I didn't see anything. I, I'll be honest. I don't necessarily am going to just believe a TikToker. I'll be honest there. I would want to look it up, and that's why I tried looking through the chats. Um, but at least from the video that I saw, where people were like, where the person was like the most upset, um, and I tr went back a bit to see if I found anything. I didn't see anything. That was crazy. I don't care how much you donate to Trevor Project. I'm done. Unfollowed so fast. Sorry, can't support this. Goodbye. Very disappointing. You can really, really feel the discrimination, and there are tons of video games, guys. Again, I don't, uh, again, it's possible. It's very possible that that actually was all the pushback. It's very possible that that was all the pushback. Um, and here we have so yeah, it would be, it would be super cringe if they made that thing and then um, people made that article and it's like, okay, they got like, like that's kind of pushback they got and they got really upset about it. That is pretty stupid. That would be very stupid. The comments they just let slide on through like rowling. Wait, what do you mean let? Oh, wait, they were talking about, wait, there were people definitely calling out other people for being like, hey, don't say that. I saw one comment that was like, hey, don't say shit like that. Um, I had the voices down, so I don't know if they ever say anything. But. Is a good person, didn't have a problem with that one. And then she had to step away and then she came back and then they continued to stream for another six hours. And here's the thing, it wasn't even a comment that made her cry from what I could see. It was her and her boyfriend fighting this imaginary angry trans person and her getting more and more overwhelmed at her defending herself against somebody who wasn't there. Boy cops don't work. I said that okay. about- Oh, maybe it was more, okay, maybe it was more of that. If that's true, then okay. Maybe I'll just, I'll probably just listen to it later. I don't know, 10 years ago, and boy, people love blinging that one at me lately. I think there's still some truth to that, though looking back, it really is just Wait, what, what work. Said? I said that about, I don't know, angry trans person, and her getting more and more overwhelmed at her defending herself against somebody who wasn't there. Boy cops don't work. I said that about, I don't know, 10 years ago, and boy, people love blinging that one at me lately. I think there's still some truth to that, though looking back, it really is just what people are using it for. Permission to not take a stand. Kind of like how people have appropriated and no ethical consumption on Okay, are they going? Oh, wait, we're near the end of the video almost. Apple Air Products cost one fifty nine, but they can't pay taxes. Decent wages on their Chinese factory post. Said on an iPhone, hey, gotcha. Car should have seatbelts. Yet you bought one. Hypergrip much owned. <laughs> you pursue society. Curious. I am very intelligent. Okay, so let's see where they take this. That is a um. This is a funny comic because that is dumb. But at the same time, there are things that you can and cannot do in society to better yourselves and to like change your opinion on something. So. I guess an example of this would be like if someone posted we should improve society somewhat and that someone is like a super hyper consumer that is like living their life in a negative way than what they morally preach it's like okay sure you're participating in our society but there are things that you could be actually be doing to capitalism regardless i know that in this case a boycott would never have worked it's harry potter and people don't care enough about trans people to pay jkr's crusade much attention a boycott is not what i wanted nor expected what most of us wanted was to simply point out why supporting a hogwarts legacy is harmful to at least get good people to think about the implications to be heard on this Sure. Great stance. Perfectly fine stance. No problem with that stance at all. As I said in the beginning, wanting to boycott something on certain beliefs and advocating for that boycott or advocating, not even for the boycott, but like, as I said, they don't believe the boycott would have worked, but advocating in the sense of like, hey, these are her views. Just think about it. Just have it in your mind when, you, when you're thinking about buying the game. There you go. And to find out who our allies really were. We... Okay. That's where I still draw the line. That's where I'm a little iffy. I don't know. Again, you can feel like you want to not call people allies that buy the game. Perfectly okay. I think you are excluding a large group of people that definitely would still vote and push for positive. If we just talk about like legislation, I'm almost certain there is a large group of people that bought Hogwarts Legacy that would support the legislation and, and movement of um, trans rights. 100%. 100,000%. 
And if you're telling me that someone could push for those things, advocate for those things, and then buy Hogwarts Legacy and no longer be an ally, I think that's a little, I think that's a little weird. I think that's weird. Certainly found out about that last one. We don't have many, and we're sadly not shocked. For me, it's not about stopping you buying Hogwarts, but to get you to accept the accountability of it. I know many of you want to consume guilt-free, but I'm not the girl who's going to condone that. It's really quite simple. If you buy it, you're not a trans ally. Yes, it's that stark and either-or choice, and this is coming from someone who it? rejects the binary whenever possible. You might not be against us, but you're either with us, or you aren't. What? <laughs> Wait, but the saying is literally you're either against us or you're or you're you're either with us or against us, and you're just trying to say that but that is the case. That is what you're kind of I feel like that is kind of manipulative. I think that is kind of manipulative right there. You know what you're doing when you say that. Like, come on. Have fun sky rimming a Hogwarts and Mary Turfness. They've got a fucking block. Anyways, the classic terrorism. B B suggested I just briefly let you know what stochastic terrorism is. It's basically what we're seeing a lot of against not just trans people, but LGBTQ plus people uh, on the wider spectrum. Uh, that knobhead Tucker Carlson does it all the time. It's causing indirect harm through rhetoric, through the normalization of bigotry and hateful ideas, through incitement. Uh, this is what uh, Tucker Carlson and a lot of these right wingers uh, that I've mentioned on this episode, including Rowling, do. They incite uh, hatred of uh, a minority, of a marginalized group, uh, in the hopes that some harm comes to them. It's no surprise that violence against trans people is on the rise and that it's rising uh, in conjunction with. Um, sex terrorism is definitely a thing. Um, not everyone who, of course, raises problems with groups of people or, like, talks about these things is committing sarcastic terrorism. Uh, people that, like, I think people can do it knowingly and unknowingly. If you're constantly pushing that you are going to be eradicated or that you're going to be, um, your way of living is going to be completely altered or that you're not going to be able to survive in this system, well, then you kind of are pushing people to believe that, like, oh, well, the only thing I can do is fucking go and do something, like, take real action and, like, maybe attack someone, use violence to stop them. That is bad. That is also, that is obviously, um, obviously not good. And there are people who definitely do it. I would say Tucker Carlson is like an easy go-to example of that. People like Carlson going on TV and engaging in groomer libel, telling everyone that we're out to get their children. Anyway, that's yeah. domestic terrorism, yeah. uh, a very insidious method of causing harm because as we've seen Rowling do now for years, uh, it allows you to plausibly deny your involvement. Well, had nothing to do with me. Of course, with JKR, there's a lot more we could talk about. Uh, we could talk about the um, many, many criticisms people have had of uh, the anti-Semitic portrayal of goblins uh, in her work. We could talk about how she constantly equates her idea of physical attractiveness to goodness, uh, certainly when it comes to um, using fatness as uh, a visual indicator of evil. But I don't know enough about the books, but if I'm looking back, I, I don't remember a lot about the books, but if I'm looking just at the movies, the like characterizations of like... Of course, everyone, the first person you're going to go to is Hagrid. Hagrid's like a really big person, and he's not evil at all. Not even, not even a little bit. Um, and then I think of, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, fuck, what's his name? The one professor from the sixth movie? The sixth book? I think he's the potions professor because Snape's the whatever the fuck. I think it's the sixth. I think it's the Bloodborne Prince one. Is it that one? Yeah, I think it is that one. Um, like, the one professor is, like, a little bit chubbier. Um, and he's, like, seen as, like, a funny kind of, like, goofy kind of guy. Um, Malfoy is definitely not seen as fat. He's, like, Malfoy's family and Voldemort are not seen as, like, fatty people. Um, I guess you got, like, Peter Pettigrew that's a little bit more chubby. You got, like, Doyle or whatever the fuck his name is. Um, the one, like, more plump guy. But Neville's also, like, a little bit more plump. Um, and he's, like, but I... Again, I'm only going from Harry Potter, but I'm trying to think of, like, fat being represented of evil. Um, I would definitely say probably, like, good-looking, maybe. That might just be... But I think that's that's not a thing for J.K. Rowling. That's a thing that's always been a thing in most media. Every, not everyone, but a lot of people do this. It's like a common trope. In this episode, I stuck with what uh, I personally feel is my field of experience, uh, okay. what I feel I can speak to most powerfully, but J.K. Rowling is a shit. That's sure. the bottom line. She's a shit. So okay. that is the sad look at Hogwarts Legacy. I have been putting this one off. I've not wanted to do it. Although, if I'm honest, uh, I'm actually quite proud of the script we put together. I'm quite proud of the video that's been oh. put together. Um, I, I think it was am pleased oh, that I got that off my ample chest, which not J.K. Rowling or Mayor Forstatter or Julie Pintle are going to take away from me. It's my tits. I earned them. You can't have them. Can't have them. Thank God for me. Up next, why Metroid Prime is my <laughs> Okay. Um, overall, 
I like the video. I definitely like the first half a lot because it goes into a lot. It gives a lot of examples. It, um, I think, does a decent idea of like, hey, I'm laying down this foundation of like, if you ever thought that she, that J.K. Rowling doesn't think these things or doesn't have these opinions, here it is easily laid out for you. Um, you can look up, I have the links, well, they don't have the links in the articles, but like the, the title of the articles are very much like prominent. I, can, I was easily able to search and find any of these things during the video. Um, so that's all great. I think it's very good. Um, the second half, I'm okay with for the most part. Like they didn't say anything that is too outlandish in my opinion. Um, there are things that I disagree with 100%. I don't think it's a good way of thinking. Again, perfectly okay to do it. But I don't think it's good. So when I say perfectly okay to do it, I mean, like, you can have these opinions. I'm not going to attack someone on these forms of opinions. I would just disagree. I think that there would be a better way to classify someone um, based off of this kind of consumerism. I think, and I, a lot of people were posting, and, okay, actually, the, the one big disagreement that I'll have specifically is I feel like there were times in that last half where there are decent criticisms against this mentality, against this way of thinking that weren't um, brought up. They try to kind of bring it up with the whole, um, what's it called? With the whole like meme about, oh, you participate, you don't like, you have things about society that you want to fix, but yet you participate, that meme. But you don't go into more of like, sure, but if you're calling someone not an, uh, not an ally because they do this, well, then there's quite a lot of things that people could do. Um, anyone who, and the, the big popular one that I see people push is specifically, um, is specifically Twitter, that Elon Musk has been shown to be like, in that group where it's like more anti-trans or like not be like pro-trans or anything like that. And with his current ownership of Twitter, if you so participate in that system, you are giving influence to him. The same way that maybe, even if JK Rowling didn't get one piece of, um, one piece of money or one like cent for any game sold. Uh, Elon Musk is definitely benefiting from the use of Twitter. And he outright like is brags about it. Even if he, I mean, sometimes he might be lying. He's bragging about like how well Twitter is under his thing, which he's definitely lying sometimes. Um, and he will, he'll take like pride in that in some manner. I don't know. If it's a huge leap where if like, okay, well, can I, can I use that as an example of like anyone who uses Twitter is not an ally. Um, or if we want to take it even further from that, can I say anyone that uses Twitch is anti-workers right because of like Twitch is owned by Amazon and therefore anyone who does it or uses it is not pro uh, workers rights. I don't, I, I don't think that is a good line to go down. We can point at things and be like, Hey, I think these are the things that we should prioritize and so for me, I think the way that you take this scenario and make it better is that you um, you push for people to understand, which they said in the video. I want to be very clear. Like they want they under, they in their mind, the boycott's not going to work. So my main goal is to put out in the idea, be like, hey, this is the creator, this is what they think. We should do something about this because it's a problem. Perfectly fine, perfectly great way to go about it because now people that were going to buy that game anyways now have a reason one to either go along with a boycott of some sort or not buy it and therefore not give like the influence that you don't want them to have, or two, maybe they do still buy the game. But the actual difference is that now this person is aware of something that this creator that they have this thing of enjoyment of, and now they can go out and be like, Hey, this person has a bad way of thinking. And if enough people agree with your view anyways, well, then. Even if they buy the game, that doesn't matter at that point because you got the message. I was like, oh, this person's bad. They're doing these bad things. Look at these bad things. It's like, oh, I like this game. Let me look at this. My creator of this game is doing. Oh, shit. They're doing some bad things. What can I do to help? Um, they can push for their legislation to change. They can donate to different organizations to help people get the help that they need. So we can make a positive out of this. And those positives can exist with or without the purchase of the game. You don't need to, those positives exist even if you don't buy, even if you buy the game, those positives exist. You don't have to not buy the game to have those positives. Um, so I think the main thing is to get out your view, be like, hey, this is information about the creator. This is what people can do. This is the suffering that people are facing from people like her. Take, take that knowledge and hopefully be a good person with that knowledge. Um, you're not helping 
that system unless you're trying to and that's what the kind of what the one person that comment that i said about like being manipulative unless you're trying to shame people into feeling a certain way so that they do it um that can definitely work i'm not against shaming people i'm not against that um but i don't know if that works for things like this if this was something along the lines of a um well, even they even they would probably admit this that if this person was doing even like way more heinous crimes maybe you would see a bigger backlash to it i could kind of see that but i still you would still have the problem where like the product seems separate from the person who created it um but if the game but if the product itself was like showing transphobia then you, that's like then I'm maybe like, then I'm like looking at you, it's like, okay, well, maybe this actually is really bad. I would have a different opinion if, oh, this game is like about killing trans people. Then I'm like, okay, hold on. I don't think you should be buying this game if this if this is like what we're pushing. Um, but yeah. Okay. So overall, it's still a good video. It's a good, it's a well put together video, in my opinion. Uh, just some of the opinions I differ on. And. I wish we could have gone a little bit more into the um, moral consumption arguments. I think that would have been a little bit more interesting and more what I'm interested in talking about. But, hey, this is a long video. I turned a 26-minute video into, like, an hour, 40 minutes or something. Uh, and I rambled a lot. But, yeah. That's all I got. Hope you all enjoyed. Uh, later.